Hey everyone, it's Carson here with Remax. I hope you guys had a good Christmas and a happy new year. Uh, since we're in the new year, I just wanted to remind everybody that the BC assessments have already been mailed out. If you haven't received it already, you can also check uh, online on their website. It's www.bcassessment.ca. And since we're already talking about BC assessment, I just wanted to show you guys a few things. So let's go to the website right now. So this is what the website's gonna look like right here. You'll be able to type your address right here in the search bar. I'm just gonna try a, a random address. Uh, let's try 1234 Main Street. Uh, okay, 1234 12th Street. When you click on it, it'll bring up your assessment value uh, on the right here. One thing to note is that the assessment value is based on July 1st of the previous year. So one thing um, that you should be aware of is that likely this value is not accurate to today's market because this is at least six months old. Um, it's probably going to be exceeding or not meeting your expectation and that's completely fine because again it is not accurate. So if you do want uh, let's say a more accurate valuation don't hesitate to let me know I'd be more than happy to do a more up-to-date valuation for you guys and um, another thing you want to be aware of is the BC assessment does not take into account um, renovations so if you did some major renovations inside of your home I don't know when the last time you've you know checked your assessment or if you've ever been aware if you've ever uh, noticed this but BC assessment has never ever reached out They've never called, they've never texted, they've never emailed, they've never sent me a letter, they've never knocked on my door. Never ever has BC Assessment ever contacted me directly to say, hey, have you guys done any renovations with your home? Um, have you guys, you know, done anything of significant value that might affect the, the value of your home? So no, they don't take an, into account of, um, <clears throat> they don't take into account of renovations. Also, if you're living in a stratified uh, complex, let's say a condo or townhouse, if you have an additional parking stall that maybe some some of the own homeowners don't have, let's say they usually have one parking stall but you have two, or you have an extra storage locker or a storage locker because some, again, some units may not originally come with a storage locker and you paid extra to, to buy that, again, that would not be factored into the value of your home. So that there could be some discrepancy there. And then of course, like I said, um, the make the biggest one is they base it off of the previous year, July 1st, and they base it usually off of the sales that were in a, in and around this date. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's usually around July 1st, but usually before prior uh, sales that have occurred prior to July 1st. So if you know there was a big sale that happened maybe in your either in your block or in your building or complex after July 1st, there's a high likelihood that wouldn't have been taken into consideration. So one other thing you want to know, let's just go back, is if you don't agree with your assessment value, you can actually appeal it. So when we go back here, if you go down here, you can see there's appeals section. And uh, one thing you want to know is that there is a deadline for the appeals. So the deadline is Jul uh, January 31st of 2022. You have to file a notice of complaint, which you can click on here or to the right here. Um, and what, what they'll ask you to do is fill out your information, your name, your address, email, uh, so on and so forth. And um, they also want something called area jurisdiction rule number. This is all information that you should receive in the letter that you'll get in the mail and it's usually i think in the top right hand corner and they'll ask you to fill in your property's information um, and then you know the reasons why, why you're appealing the decision uh, <clears throat> whether or not you feel the value is too high or too low or it's incorrect so on and so forth and some of you might ask well why would i want to appeal my decision because maybe the higher my uh, assessment value is the higher my property tax so if I don't agree um, and uh, and either it goes up then that that means I might have to pay more taxes technically yes that is uh, yes and no um, so the reason why you might want to appeal your decision 
there, there are two reasons. One could be you want to reduce property taxes. So you may want to say, hey, you know what? I feel the value is too high. I want to reduce it. And that might, that might, it doesn't always necessarily mean it'll reduce your property taxes. And the other reason, um, which could also be beneficial to you is you might want to increase the value because maybe this is the year that you're planning to sell that home or the investment property and you want the property, um, you want the assessment value to look higher because there are many buyers who base their decisions or, or their valuation off of assessment values, believe it or not. And again, I want to remind you, these values are not very accurate in my opinion. They are also out of date. They're based off of July 1st. So we're talking about six months in real estate terms. Uh, six months is a very long time. The market can shift very quickly within, you know, even two or three months or sometimes even within a few weeks. And so looking at data valuations that are based off of, sorry, looking at off valuations that are based off data from six months or longer, it's just not accurate. It's just not accurate at all. So again, if you want to, uh, uh, you want to appeal, you can go here. If you need any assistance, let me know. Um, because when you do appeal, what happens is, first of all, the appraiser from BC assessment, the one who, who it's probably going to be the person who actually, you know, they work in sections or different areas. And the one that's in charge of your, where your home is located, will probably contact you either by phone or email and say, you know, I noticed you appealed the decision. What was the reason? And then they're probably going to also want some sort of evidence or proof that, you know, to support your, your, your appeal. And so the best, you know, I guess sort of evidence you can have is actual data, which is sales data. And so you probably won't have access to that. Uh, or if you do have access to it, great. Some websites do provide sales data. Most don't. So if you do need help with that, let me know. I can, I'm more than happy to provide you with some sales data, but again, it's got to make sense, right? Um, if, if you feel it's roughly within that ballpark range, then maybe it might not be worth the hassle to, to submit that. But again, if you feel like, Hey, this is the year I'm going to sell many buyers are probably going to look at my assessment value and they're going to say, Oh, okay. His, his or her home's assessment is worth this much. And they're listing it for this much. It makes sense. I'd be willing to pay, you know, because the percentage is actually only this much because how many, you know, homes in this area typically sell for, let's say 10% or 20% above the assessment value. So for me, it makes sense. That's actually not a very accurate way. It's actually a very inaccurate way to, to calculate, um, home values, but buyers do it because they don't know a better way of, of calculating, um, or doing an evaluation of how much a home is worth. So, and they, and again, most people don't have access to the sales data. So that's how people do it. Um, and, and that might, that might benefit you in some ways. The next thing I want to talk about is your property taxes. So again, property taxes are typically, um, due on July 1st with the exception, I believe of the city of Vancouver, where they split it up into, uh, two times a year. So you pay, you know, one chunk, um, for in the first half of the year and then you pay another chunk in the second half of the year so here you'll actually know right away they they've already trying to, they're trying to debunk a myth which says my assessment value has gone up 40 percent i can't afford for my taxes to go up 40 percent so here they're trying to tell you a misconception is that a significant change in your assessed value result in a will result in a proportionately significant change in your property taxes and that's not true and and it's saying here the most important factor is how much your assessed value has changed uh, it's not how much your assessed value has changed but how your assessed value has changed relative to the average change for your property class in your municipality or taxing jurisdiction so what it's saying is based on the property type or class let's say if yours is a house or yours is a condo or a townhome or half duplex how much percentage in change has it gone up or down based on the average of other similar types of homes in your area so if your home has gone up possibly 50 percent um, in assessed value whereas other homes in your area or in your complex or building or neighbor 
um, have have only gone up between 20 to 30 percent, then that probably could affect you more than you know um, than if you if you went up just the same as everybody else. So there's that. And then some people want to know, you know, how how do, how is the property tax equation uh, calculated? So if you go down here, you'll see there's a property tax evaluation. And it's a very simple formula. What they do is they take your assessed value. So yes, your assessed value does, you know, play a factor into your property taxes. And they multiply it by the property tax rate. So uh, I don't have access to the property tax rate, but the property tax rate, it actually says here, is um, based from your taxing authority. So they're the ones who set the property tax rates. It's based on, you know, it, it says here in early spring, your taxing authority sets a property tax rate for each of the nine property classes and applies the applicable rate, i.e. residential to your property's class value, less the value of any applicable uh, tax exemptions. And then they mail you the notice and so on and so forth. So they are the ones who set the tax rate. Um, I don't know what the tax rate is based on your municipality. Everyone should be different if you want to know you can probably check with your own municipality and call your city um, hall and they should be able to give you that idea and then from there you'll have your property tax and again it's typically due on july 1st of the year so that is mostly what i wanted to talk about um, again if you had any questions about your actual true home market value or if you had any uh, questions or needed some help with appealing your decision for BC assessment, feel free to reach out. I'm more than happy to help you, um, maybe providing you some data that might help support your appeal. Or if you just have any questions about your evaluation because you feel like, hey, why is my evaluation so low or why is it so high? Um, can you make sense of this for me? Because, you know, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, I'm more than happy to do that. And, and again, like I said, because it's based off July 1st of the previous year, likely all that data that you that you, that was used by the appraiser is out of date data. Well, it might have been accurate at the time of July 1st, but at this point in time, it's not accurate anymore because the market has definitely shifted from six months ago. So again, I hope this was helpful and informative. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out. And if you like this video, um, please help give me a like and a subscribe because that really helps me and tells me that um, you know the information that I'm providing is helpful and uh, that's it so I uh, thank you so much and I'll see you guys in the next video bye